Apple World Records had a category for an actress who turned down the most reality shows. Yeah. 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 Because here's the thing, I never wanted to play myself on television. <laughs> Nevertheless, people think they know me. Like, really think they know me. Okay, really? Um, that's really short. Um, you know, they think they know me based on a character that I played decades ago. So tonight, I feel like I'm being given an opportunity to be myself. Um, uh, and I hear you guys are gentle with first-timers. with a whistle and a clipboard, a natural born producer. In fact, my nickname used to be Oz because I was always behind the curtain making this happen for other people. I was a good girl, got good grades, worked hard, always was that girl that did favors, I loaned money, pimped for my guy friends, found boyfriends for my girlfriends, uh, got jobs for people, connected people. I think it's one of the reasons that I was chosen to be one of the girls to talk to Norman Lear and Ellen Horn and Charlotte Ray who came up to Westlake School for Girls, which is now called Westlake Harvard. Um, and I was about to enter ninth grade. But they wanted to talk to some of the students to try and authenticate scripts and come up with story ideas, because an all-girl boarding school is going to be the backdrop of Charlotte's spinoff from different strokes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this good girl you see before you got discovered. Crazy. Not like the Lana Turner glamorous story, because I was 13 and clad in a uniform, but it was quite extraordinary. Um, the role of Natalie was created for me. Uh, Charlotte's a real life best friend in high school, her name was Natalie, and Norman had asked me what's my favorite color in part of the conversation, and I said green. So literally, Natalie Green was born. <laughs> Life a sitcom taking place at an all-girls boarding school was off to the races, and I was in it. So, full disclosure, and cut to a few years later, uh, while well, Natalie was ensconced at the Eastland School for Girls with Blair, Joe, and Tootie. <laughs> oh my god, I'm going to be 90 and that's going to happen. <laughs> Mindy was at CBGB's in Studio 54, hanging out with models and heartthrobs and rock stars. <laughs> So remember, this is the 80s, and while Reagan was in office and the conservatives ran Congress, decadence and overindulgence were the order of the day. I saw bowls of cocaine, plates of pills, jars of weed, right next to the wine and vodka at almost every party. The celebrity chef craze had just kind of started with a vengeance, and I shared five-star, six-course meals with movie stars and real estate moguls, and even the head of the Los Angeles chapter of Hells Angels. <laughs> I was exposed to a life of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Uh, but not to get it twisted, my actions were more along the lines of hair holding, hand jobs, and cigarettes. <laughs> but I wasn't a prude. My mother had talked to me about my body and sex very early on by teaching me with a book we read together called How You Were Born. <laughs> so I had a very normal, healthy fascination with my body and my bits, masturbated like a champion. <laughs> And no problem being that friend that could kind of talk about anything. So I was convinced that if my body looked like my feet, you guys can't see, but they're really fucking spectacular, <laughs> that I would be a sex machine. But the truth is, at 19, I felt like Los Angeles' oldest living virgin. Um, but realistically, where am I supposed to meet someone? How is this supposed to happen? I go to an all-girls school. I then go and work with more girls. <laughs> And then in my spare time, I'm mothering and ministering to my various wild and or addicted friends. So there's no healthy boyfriend access whatsoever, and that just wasn't going to do. So, like with everything else and everyone else in my life, the loss of my virginity was a well-thought-out planned mission. <laughs> I was spending the summer and fat hiatus shooting my first feature film, Boy Who Could Fly, up in Vancouver. And by another burst of serendipity that my life has seemingly been infused with, uh, one of my dearest darling friends with a, was up there shooting a TV show. The fact that he was one of the most beautiful people on the planet, of course, helped convince me that this was pretty much the perfect scenario. And so, with no shame or hesitation, I asked him if he'd like to assist me in helping me lose my virginity. <laughs> he was game. And he actually gave me a very emphatic, Hell yeah, man, I'd love to! <laughs> Helped a lot. 
I was ensconced in a beautiful suite at a five-star hotel with a gorgeous view of the harbor, and we agreed that my last night of shooting, uh, before heading back home to Los Angeles, would be the perfect ending to an already amazing summer. What was left to do? Well, as my romance novel mind started my to-do list, my first stop was Neiman Marcus, Estelle, of course, um, where I purchased one adorable, luxurious negligee, two, Inform my gaggle of friends that my de-virginization was imminent. <laughs> Three, constantly, relentlessly, checking in with my friend to see if he was still gaming into it. I mean, was he sure? Because look, even though this was technically going to be a one-night stand, I wanted it to be the most perfect experience ever. And he needed to do the deed to the best of his abilities. <laughs> So that afterwards, I would somehow look and present so differently that boys and men would come running after me like a heat-seeking missile. <laughs> Did I need to do anything to ensure he would indeed make me come? <laughs> I didn't think I was asking too much. <laughs> so where's the romance, you say? Well, ironically, and I think people who know me will tell controlling. <laughs> the ability to organize, manage, and create, while at the same time insisting that my senses be assaulted. Yes, Busybody Inc., my other nickname, is also a mad sensualist. And so, July 8th, he and I assaulted our senses with an amazing dinner, ooh, amazing dinner, a drive along the water on my favorite road in North Vancouver, stopping in at a dive bar that always had the greatest live music, before finally arriving back at my suite at the Four Seasons Vancouver. I popped in the shower, put on the silk and lace negligee, and we went to work. <laughs> now, truth. We had kissed before. I kiss all my friends. I mean, didn't you? <laughs> so, it's not like we never shared a moment. Or two. Or ten. So, in fact, he was the first to say, um, might I say, first of many. Hashtag humble brat. Um, <laughs> It told me I was an amazing kisser and that it was deceptive because I really didn't kiss like I was a virgin. <laughs> was I one of those girls who had just practiced incessantly on my hand? No, folks. I am just one orally fixated chick. <laughs> um, who also sucked their thumb until they were 11. <laughs> so, see, Mom, not such a bad habit after all. <laughs> I obviously developed some skill sets that involve suction and tongue. But, in between fabulous make-out kissing bits, I developed a little performance anxiety and a couple of belts of anxiety about my performance and self-consciousness, and I mean, this is one fabulously hot fella, so even with his adorable coaxing, constant reassurance that he was having a great time, that he found me deliciously attractive, that he had a raging heart on, um, God bless youth in his pre-drug phase. Um, I kept stopping him just short of actual penetration. So yep, I gave my gorgeous friend who every girl and their mother wanted to fuck a gnarly case of blue balls. So when he suggested to me that, look, we don't even have to do this right now. We can reconnect when we get home in Los Angeles, try again. I knew I had to get her done. Because here's what I know for sure, I am not a quitter. <laughs> And so, the light in the night sky started to brighten, and I asked him to call downstairs to the concierge uh, and ask for the correct time. <laughs> and he looked at me, and he's like, Min, what? Like, really? Why? And I, I, I said, I want to know the exact, and he said, okay, okay, yeah, whatever you need. God, I love you. Yeah, he knew me. And so, gang, according to reception, at 4.55 a.m., Mindy Cone lost her virginity. Woo! And honestly, I had a ball. Uh, and while there was a little discomfort, I was obviously intact. Um, my first words post-event were actually, mourn again. And so we did. Um, and I love that his first words were, but the, I think they were his first. They're the first words I remember. Um, were, you know what, man, that was fun. And you know, I'm totally down to continue to fuck you proper. <laughs> Right? Charmer. Anna Wordsmith. Yeah. So, um, I have to say,
say that based on my fact-finding pre-event from friends that this was probably not going to be the most pleasant or pleasurable experience, I was gobsmacked at how much I enjoyed it. I mean, what a great first anything uh, it was and how lucky I was to have a guy who, yes, got me and um, gave me the experience I actually wanted. So now a couple weeks later, facts started up again and I'm back on the Eastland School for Girls campus. Natalie Green, still a virgin. The show revolved around the lives of four girls and like every Norman Lear sitcom tackled to new subjects. So there were episodes about cheating and pot smoking and drunk driving and divorce and death of a parent, even teen suicide. And yet by season seven, a show called The Facts of Life uh, had yet to deal with sex. So while I was quite passionate that no subject should be off limits, I was also moved to address the insatiable rumors that had developed about all the characters being lesbians. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But that's probably why the subject hadn't been tackled. And so when I heard that the writer's room was finally ready to take on sex, I volunteered Natalie. I thought her cherry should be popped. Especially hearing that Lisa Welch, being a devout Christian, was not going to allow Blair, the oldest, to do it, which is really what the writers had wanted. So, I thought Natalie was a better idea. She already had a steady boyfriend. I mean, she wasn't the most beautiful, the most daring, or the most popular. That is the girl to get laid! Yeah. So, gratefully, the writers were charmed, and I think relieved that I was so gung-ho. Um, and so, the same year I lost my virginity in Vancouver, in the angles of TV, uh, and, and <laughs> Show me.